show your support, like, share and subscribe. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome to a brand new series, Hidden Gems. Now in this series I will be looking at new upcoming games that maybe haven't got the spotlight that perhaps they deserve and also looking at some games that may have kind of passed myself and others by at the time and just didn't get quite the reception that perhaps they should have done and need bringing into the limelight. In this video I want to concentrate on the HD collection of the combined works of Zone of the Enders the first Zone of the Enders game and the sequel, The Second Runner. Both games were published by Konami and produced by Hideo Kojima. The first game was released in 2001 and actually had a demo for the Sons of Liberty game, the Metal Gear Solid 2 game, and the second Zone of the Enders game was released in 2003. Both of these games were originally released on the PlayStation 2, but the versions I am looking at, as I said, are the HD collection, where they were combined for re-release on the PlayStation 3, which was released in 2012. Now, thankfully, I didn't actually pay anything for these games. They were in the January free PlayStation Plus releases for the PlayStation 3, but they are on the PlayStation Store usually for only $12.99, and I did find a kind of a physical copy of this on Amazon for $18.99. So they're not too expensive, but I'm kind of lucky that I managed to get hold of these for nothing. Now, when the games were originally released, I wasn't overly aware of this kind of extra project that Kojima had done. The first game actually sold very well at the time, mainly um, because it had the Metal Gear Solid 2 demo. The reception to the game was okay, which obviously spawned a sequel, but the sales for that kind of dipped. In the first game, you control a character called Leo and he pilots what is called uh, an orbital frame called Jehuti, which is effectively a giant mecha. Think Japanese anime here. In this game you are tasked with kind of moving around the city that you're in and delivering this orbital frame to your contact Elena. And while you kind of go through that there are various civilians to save on the way and other mechanical foe to defeat. At the very start of the game you see a few cutscenes of this group making some kind of attack on a base and you have to kind of fend them off at various times as well and they are in similar machines to yourself and kind of act as bosses effectively throughout the game. The gameplay itself is very kind of hack and slash. It's kind of can be boiled down to one button mashing if you play it on the kind of lower difficulty levels. There are um, obviously dodges and blocks required because you do only have a certain amount of health. And there are other techniques that you can utilize in order to defeat your enemies. Now, at the very beginning of this game, the game actually does take you through a fairly extensive tutorial where it explains all the different uh, techniques and movements and what all the button commands do. You are able to view the explanation of these and then try them out for yourself before actually proceeding on to the game. And when you are able to then unlock extra abilities as you go through the game, the game actually draws you back into those tutorial menus just to show you the new bits that you've unlocked so that you can get used to that before moving on to the next part of the game. Now over in the second game, the second runner, you control a different character called Dingo who again comes across this orbital frame Jehuti and we actually meet up with Leo as well who by this time has become a full time pilot. Now the second game was released two years later and quite coincidentally is set two years after the first game as well and they have kind of gone out of their way to refine and polish the mechanics 
just to make it that little bit smoother and play a lot easier. They've also removed the kind of hostage element of it as well so that you can just kind of get through the map and get to your objectives and get through the storyline. Now I say get through as well because both of these games are quite short sort of around five six hours ish really and that was its main criticism when each one was released obviously with both of them being bundled together they kind of fit together to make one overall game which is slightly better and because you can pick it up fairly cheaply for what is still a pretty decent console system obviously the PlayStation 3 is still only at time of recording anyway one generation prior to um, the kind of current gen you know that you're going to get a game that plays very well it looks very good as well Konami have gone out of their way to kind of really um, boost the graphics and the sound and the gameplay of this game to make it as playable and as enjoyable for the PlayStation 3 as they can. Now between the first game and the second game Kojima got one of the writers Shuyo Murata who has also worked with him on the Metal Gear series he got him involved as the second game's director just to give it a bit more focus and a bit more attention to detail as he trusted his work a bit more. Another name that has cropped up with looking at these games as well is Yoji Shinkawa, the art director for the Metal Gear Solid series. He also worked on the character development and, and the artistic side of the Zone of the Enders games as well. The games themselves were pretty successful over in Japan, spawning a short anime series. And if you, like me, are quite a big fan of the Metal Gear Solid series and Hideo Kojima as well, and are kind of waiting with bated breath to see what Death Stranding is like, this is quite a nice little distraction if you haven't come across this game or these games yet um, in your collection to just try them out and see what other things were bubbling along in his mind with the same sort of team that he was working with on the Metal Gear Solid series. Overall the collection definitely gets a thumbs up from me. I would happily have paid the $12.99 that the PlayStation Store is asking for this game. I think the $18.99 on Amazon may be a bit of a stretch, so if you can get hold of the game for under £15, then that kind of sees you the right side of value for money, in my opinion. One thing I will say, though, is don't go into these games with a Metal Gear Solid mind frame. They are very, very different. They are also very Japanese in the way that they are presented and in kind of the gameplay that you get and the themes and everything involved with the game but they are still very enjoyable nonetheless and obviously if anime and that kind of thing is really your go-to then I would highly suggest checking these games out and giving them a try. So they were my thoughts on Zone of the Enders, the HD collection for PlayStation 3. Please let me know what you think of the game or games if you've played one or other of them on any platform in the comments below. Please support me if you can by subscribing to the channel and giving this video a like. I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.